You know what time it is. It's time again for another Crown and Comments with Cruise Man. <laughs> Who else? Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Um, well, it's been a while. It is October, I don't know, what is it, the 17th. And I thought today would be a good day to do a crown and comments. I have got several comments I want to work my way through. Now, for those of you that are kind of new to this, if you've never seen crown and comments before, this is my opportunity to read through some of the comments that you guys have either emailed me. And I say when I say guys, I don't mean that gender specific, obviously. Um, it could be ladies. We do have several that ride motorcycles, ride gold wings, as a matter of fact. So I go through your comments and I respond to them. Not all of them, obviously, but the ones I pick out here and there. And so that's what we're going to do. If you like this type of content, if you like motorcycles, uh, if you're passionate about it, uh, you know, maybe consider taking a second to click that subscribe button down below. And don't forget that notification bell, because um, we're trying to get to 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And that's a, I don't know, it's a stretch for a small channel like this, but ultimate goal, 100,000, 100,000 subscribers in 2023. That's where we want to be. So um, anything you can do to uh, help out in that regard, much appreciated. So I've got my Mac Book Pro here. 16-inch, uh, and I am going to read through some of these. I've also got my Crown Royal, which is my personal favorite adult beverage. Uh, sometimes I use Canadian Club because I like that as an alternative, but to me, the Crown Royal just has a little more yeah, sophistication, whatever. Uh, what is your, if you have a favorite beverage, and it does not have to be an adult beverage. This could be a you know, a carbonated beverage, whatever. What is your favorite beverage? Put it in the comments down below. Just curious. Okay, let's get started. First thing, man, my my uh, studio table, my desk here is getting kind of messy. I've got a bunch of crap here I need to get cleaned off. So the first thing I want to talk about is very important issue because it's just cropped up in the last couple of weeks, actually. And it doesn't happen on every one of my videos. But for those of you that watch my videos and you put comments in on my videos, uh, you may have noticed some spam or scammers. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, I'm going to put some examples up on the screen. Here's one that says... Congratulations, you've won, and they want you to text them above. Uh, there's another one here that actually, what they do is they, I guess they're creating a YouTube account and they're stealing my logo, and then they use that as their logo so that when they post a reply to one of your comments, it makes it look like I'm replying to your comment, which I'm not in this case. And it says, like, telegram me, congratulations, you've won a prize. And then they want you to, you know, click on a link or do something. So be aware of this. Um, I've seen it on at least two, maybe three of my videos. And what they're doing is they're going through uh, every single comment that's been posted. And they're posting the exact same thing. So what I do is I, I do report it to YouTube. I don't know why YouTube can't shut down this kind of stuff. And maybe, they, maybe they're doing the best they can with it. But uh, it's becoming, I know it's an issue on other channels because there's a couple of channels I follow and they are always mentioning in their uh, videos that don't, you know, don't fall, don't succumb to the scammers or spammers or whatever they are. So anyway, be aware of that. And I'll put some examples up on the screen for you. Okay, my first uh, comment that I want to help somebody with, maybe some of you out there can offer some suggestions or assistance. This is from Unicorn Hair Head. Man, <laughs> what a handle. Okay, I'm just going to zip through this pretty quick. I uh, love my 21 Goldwing, six-speed. He has 27,000 miles on it. 
Uh, he took it in for a computer recall uh, thing, and he now has an issue. He gets a lot of vibration on acceleration and a different exhaust note plus a slight loss of power. Uh, apparently, he's researched this. He's found he's not the only one that's having this issue. His dealer is contacting Honda, but he's not expecting any good news. I guess this happened after he had the, uh, maybe they reflashed the ECU. I'm not sure what they do on that uh, on that recall. I don't have that recall on the 2018. So if any of you know, maybe put that in the comments too. And he says, I always respect your opinion. It's nice to know there are alternatives out there. Um, and so anyway, uh, I think he was referring to my uh, Indian pursuit review on that statement. So if any of you know what he's talking about, we have this loss of power, vibration on acceleration, uh, different exhaust note, loss of power and all that. After having this update done, this uh, a recall addressed, uh, put it in the comments down below and help out Unicorn Hair Head. Okay. So the next one is from Daniel Kleiner, and Daniel is a, a pretty frequent commenter on some of my videos. I recognize the avatar, and he says, this is uh, on the video that I did where I talk about the Bluetooth problem getting solved, the uh, connectivity issue with the Goldwing on Bluetooth headsets. And he says, I love your videos, Chris, but this one is clickbait. And he's not the only one to post a comment like this. I got several comments uh, on this video, and I was hoping that more of you might take the, uh, understand that a lot of what I'm suggesting was tongue-in-cheek, and it was designed to show the absurdity of, of how uh, I was able to get the headset to connect just by virtue of the fact the only thing I had changed is that I had paired my headset to an Indian pursuit. Now, and I, you know, like I say, tongue in cheek, I said, you know, my solution now is you go out and buy an Indian pursuit, pair your headset to the Indian, then go back to the Goldwing and everything should work fine. I wasn't serious. Now, Daniel's not saying I was serious, but I think there's an important message in that video and that that is that there obviously is something that can be done to make these Bluetooth communicators communicate more reliably to a Goldwing. So this got me thinking about some different tests we might be able to do. And what is it really that's, that's going on here? I know that you can pair a headset to multiple sources. So for example, in my case, I have my Cena 50S and it's paired to the Indian Pursuit and then it's also paired to the Goldwing. Now, and it was connecting reliably almost every time on my 2018. However, I just recently paired it to another Goldwing. And I notice I'm having the same connectivity issues that I was having previously. So what could, what does that, what does that mean? Now, Somebody out there in this audience knows a hell of a lot more about Bluetooth than I do and how this all works. And it's a shame that somebody from Cena doesn't understand this because maybe they could explain this. But possibly, I'm just, and I'm using uh, layman's terminology here because I have no idea what I'm talking about. But possibly, when you pair the headset to a audio source like a motorcycle or a phone or whatever it is, that it it maintains a stack of things inside the headset that it's paired to. Is it possible that if the Goldwing is the last thing you pair to, the last source in the stack, that that's what's causing the problems? That if you have it paired to the Goldwing, and then you pair it to something else, the Goldwing is still in that Bluetooth stack, I'll call it, for lack of a better term, and maybe that does something. So my the purpose of my motovlog and the purpose of my video is to get you thinking about this, that there is obviously something that maybe can be done if, 
if for no other reason, to trick the Goldwing into uh, working or connecting reliably. Now, this is not an issue on all motorcycles. I didn't have any trouble connecting to the BMW. I didn't have any trouble connecting to the Indian. But I did. I do to the Goldwing consistently. And I'm pretty sure, I, I think somebody has told me that the Goldwing is using a much older version of Bluetooth. And these newer motorcycles or these other motorcycles have a newer updated 5.1 or whatever the current version of Bluetooth is. And apparently the way Honda built this audio system, apparently there's no way they can update the Bluetooth version when they update the navigation and audio system. I guess. I don't know. Somebody out there knows this, please put it in the comments. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run some more tests. I'm going to get my headset, my 50S, which I just paired to a second Goldwing, and I'm still, and now I'm having those connectivity issues again. I'm going to go out, test it again with my 2018 Goldwing, see if those connectivity issues are resolved, and maybe there's an answer there somewhere. So the purpose of my video yeah, maybe it was clickbait, okay? You'll notice I put a question mark. I said Bluetooth problem solved, question mark, okay? Okay, it's clickbait. I agree, Daniel. Sorry. I, what am I going to do? I'm trying to get people to watch the video. Some of you, I think, got the humor and you got the joke. And, um, you know, don't take any of these videos too seriously. Uh, I have kind of a weird off-the-wall sense of humor. I told Don this story at breakfast one day about the Indian and pairing, and so he thought it was funny. He got it. Okay, Steve Bennett. This is a comment on my recent, just a couple days ago, the Senna 50C review video, which I apologize. It was a very long video, 37 minutes. I think it's the longest video I've ever posted on that new Senna camera communicator combination anyway steve says like the 10c before it the mounting sucks it should have used the 20s so that you can plug earphones in i think he means the mounting system for the 20s which does have an external uh, microphone and external uh, headphone jacks you can't do that with the 50c uh, having said that, it does check both my boxes, even though it doesn't have any tire frame rate. I'm not sure what a tire frame rate is. Uh, Mesh and camera. Now, if they could just make it play well with the Cardo gang. Yeah, well, Bluetooth is just... Bluetooth headsets, if they're not from the same brand, from the same company, um, I, I've had lots of trouble getting Cardo. I know you can do it. I've seen it done, but we've had Senna Bluetooth trying to connect to mesh, and it's a pain in the butt. So I, I admire any of you out there that are able to make it work, because I, I know there was a group of us going on a group ride once, and we stood around for 30 or 45 minutes trying to get Bluetooth headsets to pair to each other. And the open mesh is definitely light years ahead in that regard. This is from Slappy Adventures. He says, great video. I've had mine for five months now. I have a 10C as well. I didn't even know the 50C had been out for five months. I love the 50C. I use it on all my videos on my channel now. So Slappy Adventures has his own YouTube channel. Make sure you check that out. See what he's got going on over there. I look forward to your content when you start using it. Uh, well, I did use it on the BM, a couple of the BMW videos. So I don't know how much I'm going to use it um, in the future. I've got a new helmet coming in, and I may install the 50C on that helmet uh, just because I have the GoPro on my current HJC IS Max 2. I'm going to try one of these new, I think I'm going to try one of these new HJC I-90 helmets. If any of you have that helmet, let me know in the comments down below. Let me know what you think about it. This is Scott G. Now, he is commenting on my Rider Backrest installation and review video for the Showchrome Rider Backrest. And he asks me, does this mount still make the seat water resistant? 
And the answer is no. I haven't actually seen a seat rider backrest that there's always an opening where the where the tongue goes down into the seat. Uh, everyone I've seen, my Utopia has the same thing. There's always a slight opening. So if you're in a heavy rain, uh, water could get down through that slot, uh, small opening. Now, I'm sure there's a way to rig up a way that it is water resistant or proof. The, the seat on the Goldwing is not waterproof. I don't know if you know that. I didn't know this until John down at uh, uh, Bike Solutions told me this. But really, those seats are not waterproof. There is ways. There is a way for water to get in through those seams. But there is a there is probably a way you could rig up a nice little boot or something to kind of keep the majority of water out of that little opening. So the answer to your question, Scott, is no. It does not make the seat water resistant. Sorry about my voice. It's kind of breaking up on me today. Next comment is from Brian A. I can and this is on the my comparison of the Indian pursuit to the Honda Goldwing. I can confirm that the iPhone Pro Max does fit in the Challenger Pursuit glove box. Okay, thank you. That's good to know. I don't have a, a Pro Max. Don does. I should have asked him if I could borrow his to try to fit it in there. So that's good to know, Brian. Thanks for letting us know that. So if any of you have the iPhone Pro Max or one of the larger Samsung phones, it should fit in that little glove box on that Indian Pursuit. Good to know. Okay, this is from an older video where I was talking about the 2023 Goldwing. Is it going to be around before we knew? And he asks me a question about my maintenance videos. He says, off-topic question, does your maintenance video package include the 23 model? And the answer is yes, because nothing's changed. Nothing has changed mechanically on the Goldwing uh, since 2021. So it's essentially it's the same motorcycle. Now there are some differences. There are some uh, trunk panels that are different and I do have videos that show how to remove those side panels on the trunk and how to remove the trunk lid. And so there might be some minor uh, differences and as soon as I get a 2022 or 2023 in here that I can actually use as a model, I'll produce videos and update that. I think my videos currently will show you enough to where you'll be able to figure out how to do it. I doubt that it's that much different. So anyway, except for installing a luggage rack is much easier now than it used to be. Uh, and that brings me to the real topic of the day. I do have in my garage right now a 2022 Honda Goldwing. Honda sent me the, the Goldwing to review and to test, and I'm very excited about it. I have ridden it a couple of times. I am going to do my very best to be as objective as possible, and it's hard because I've been riding Goldwing since 2006. And I am kind of a Goldwing bigot, I guess. I, I do tend to favor the Goldwing. I, 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 I've been a big fan of Hondas. I've owned other motorcycle brands in the past. I've owned Suzuki's. I've owned, uh, I've owned Yamaha's. I've owned Kawasaki's. But I am pretty partial to Honda recently, especially the Goldwing. But I'm going to try to take myself out of that world, you might say, and look at this motorcycle objectively as, as if I was just going out as anybody out there to buy a motorcycle. What would I think of it? What do I like about it? What are the features? I'm gonna I'm gonna do it just like I did the other, the BMW and the Indian. I'm gonna be as objective and harsh as I possibly can because I think that's the only way you can fairly review a motorcycle. Now, I'm going to know a lot about it already because it's so similar to my 2018. I mean, the ride and the handling are going to virtually be the same. It's not. It, it's the same bike, it's the same engine, it's the same controls, it's the same, you know, it, it's, um, 
except for the trunk and some of the other things, uh, there's some transmission changes, but we'll talk about that. And I will do a comparison video comparing the 2022 Goldwing, and I'm going to call it 2022-2023 because essentially it's the same as the 2023 Goldwing. There's no changes between 2022 and 2023 other than color, other than price. That's it. They didn't change anything. They didn't add any features. They didn't take away any features that I know of. And I can already tell you, you're going to want to watch this series of videos because I've already found a couple of things about this 2022 Goldwing that I'm not happy with, I'm not happy about, and I wouldn't be happy about even if I wasn't a Goldwing owner. So I hope Honda didn't think I was going to give them a fluff piece just because I'm a Honda Goldwing owner. They're going to get the same uh, critical review that I would give any other motorcycle. And hopefully by the end of this month or the first part of next month, I may actually get some Triumph motorcycles in here to review. So keep our fingers crossed on that. I think that'd be kind of cool. So anyway, what motorcycles would you like to see me review? And what is your opinion of these reviews that I've done so far? I did the, I did the K1600 GTL. Uh, I did the uh, Indian Pursuit. Anyway, I want to thank Honda up front for shipping this motorcycle out to me. The motorcycle came in with 3,600 miles on it, so it's not brand new, you might say. The Indian, I think, had 700 miles on it when it showed up. And by the way, they haven't picked it up yet. I'm still waiting for Indian to come get their bike. I've got it in my garage. It's getting kind of tight out there. It's a small garage. So anyway, I want to thank you for joining me today. I hope you found this video interesting. If you like the video, you know, you know the drill. Give it the thumbs up. It really does help out the YouTube channel. I'm doing everything I can to build up our viewership, to build up our subscriber base. And so anything you can do to spread the word about Cruise Man's Garage channel, much appreciated. And don't forget my maintenance videos for the 2018 to 2023 Honda Goldwing. You will save, if you use these videos and you do the maintenance yourself, you will save $1,000 a year, at least $1,000 a year in dealer maintenance if you do everything you're supposed to be doing. So check them out. I'll put links in the description down below. Thanks again for joining me today, and I'll see you on the next Crown of Comments right here live, Dallas, Texas, Carrollton, Texas, same thing. Thanks, everybody. Remember, ride often, ride safe, and do not ride after you've had crown. See you next time.